Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go! Ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, welcome to Super Agents Live. Hey, if you are new, I'm so glad you found the show. What we talk about on the show is real estate, how to become, and really, this show is really about entrepreneurship through the lens of a real estate agent. So, you know, if you're if you don't sell real estate, maybe you're a plumber out there, plumber, pie maker, whoever you are. There's tons of great stuff here. We talk about really how to build your business, how to manage your mindset, and uh, just in in general, personal development. Now look, today's episode, you're gonna love. You know, this episode is, we talk about how to build a predictable business through building an awesome farm, right? We talk about marketing. Today's guest, I just I want to say his name so bad. I just this is such an awesome episode. But we talk about marketing strategies uh, and, and what he did to build his farm and how. Now I'm going to throw out a big number here. I'm going to throw out two big numbers, but just just think about the math here. This person spends seventy five thousand dollars a year in marketing. That might seem like a lot, but from that seventy five thousand dollars, he generated one point nine seven million dollars, almost two million dollars. So. I'll tell you, if I could find a machine where I fed it $75,000 and it kicked out almost $2 million, I'm in. So we talk about what he does and how he does that. And look, and, and you know, it, a lot of people think about farming and they think about door knocking. Look, that is an essential part of farming. Today's guest, never knocked on a single door. So stay tuned. <clears throat> Before we get to it, let's hear from our sponsor. We all know the best kind of referral is one from our sphere or farm. But how do we stay top of mind? Now, most people, they take a three-pronged approach, right? They door knock in their farm, they call people, and they mail them. Most people fall down by not getting to their people, their sphere, their farm. They don't get them engaging content. And look, you know, sure, we can list them a postcard or we can send them an article that we think is going to be of interest to them. Our new sponsor, Discover Publications, takes that one step further. For just slightly more than the cost of a stamp, Discover Publications creates a completely customized newspaper. Now, they'll go out and they'll curate content, or you can create your own. All of my sponsors are white labeled. Now, I called, prior to having them on the show, I called some of Discover Publications clients, and I talked to this one guy, and he does some interesting things. He'll go out and interview restaurants that are in his farm, in his sphere. He creates a write-up. He, interestingly enough, resells advertising in his own newspaper to his trusted network, whether that's the plumber or the insurance agent. And by the way, this guy has 60% market penetration. He told me the paper has cemented those numbers. If you're interested, go check out discoverpubs.com. Let me know what you think. All right, before we get to the content, real quick, uh, if you don't know, the hashtag for the show is Unpack That Idea. Uh, it's a big follow train. Go ahead and use it and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, the second thing, I don't know if you've heard about this. I've talked about it maybe the last three or four shows, but we are doing July 18. We are doing a an event, a live event here in San Diego. Um, we're going to rent a hotel suite. Uh, we're going to get some catered food and we're going to mastermind all day. Now, listen, it's it's. Uh, we're only going to have 10 or 12 people there max, so it's going to be small, so we everybody gets enough time to talk. Uh, and uh, and look, it's only 150 bucks. So if you're interested, uh, send me an email, let me know, we'll put you on the list. Uh, and the last thing, look, one of the other things, th- there's two things that make successful agents, right? Hire a coach, and all, and the other thing is, is build a farm. We hear that all the time. Uh, if you don't have a coach, I can help you. I have one more spot left. Send me an email, and uh, just go to the site, and uh, that's it. Also... If you, if, if you like this stuff, all the show notes can be found at superagentslive.com. Go check it out. Let's get to the show. Hey, Kenny, thanks for taking the time out today. Toby, I appreciate the opportunity and I uh, look forward to it, man, definitely. Yeah, we're going to have some fun. So listen, I, I've given the audience a brief overview of your background, but you know, I know you have an interesting story. So you know, maybe take a minute, tell us about yourself and, uh, you know, and about what you're working on today. 
So my name is, uh, is Kenny Klaus. I'm with Keller Williams out in uh, sunny Arizona. Um, one of the sunshine states, so we typically have, have more people moving here than away, so it creates a pretty diverse group of, uh, of opportunities and, and referrals, to be honest with you. We do a lot of agent-to-agent uh, -agent referrals out here, but uh, my background is I'd spent 13 years with FedEx. Uh, I was the FedEx guy there for quite a while, and um, just my entrepreneur spirit said, you know, I, I don't need a ceiling on what the opportunities are, and so kind of took the same basic fundamentals that I learned in FedEx, which was, um, well, what I used to call my realtor route until NAR sent me an email and said, we can't call it the realtor route, but, um, so now we just call it our farm route, but the idea of taking a geographic area, kind of putting a fence around it, and then just consistently adding value uh, to that area to become really what I call the local market expert. Um, so over the course of, since 2001, I've consistently uh, geographically farmed, started with one subdivision of about 1,700 homes. We now go to about 20,000 homes every month. Um, and just, again, we do a little uh, little half uh, piece of paper folded in half, two sheets of paper actually, so it creates eight pages. Do a little newsletter based on uh, community, uh, you know, local events that are happening. And then um, we did do a lot of free ads on the back, but that was really before the evolution of Craigslist, so those aren't quite as productive as they used to be. And then, of course, in the center is, is all the real estate stuff, the sold, um, market updates, properties for sale, the, you know, the stuff that the, the typical newsletter would have. So, and that's, like I said, been consistent and it's a lot of fun because you get to get out, interact with the community. Um, I kind of farm more on steroids than the typical agent who may just send a newsletter for three or four months and then say farming doesn't work. Um, you know, I had a 12 month budget when I started day one, I was in a relatively new area where turnover rates weren't real, real high, but I just foresaw what if I could do this and in 10 years, what would a business look like? And so going back to the FedEx idea, you know, when the packages come down off the truck in the morning, you know, they have all the drivers are lined up and packages are coming down and it's not like they just randomly take one off the belt. They take a package that goes to their route. And as they get to develop their route, of course, they know the ins and outs, where to deliver, what time to pick up, get to build relationships with their clients, both business and residential. So that was kind of the vision was <clears throat> why not just run a route and get to know all the business owners in the area because, again, they're serving the clients that are hopefully mine down the road as far as that live in the area. Then get to know my product, which was the houses. And so previewing properties because I didn't have any listings, so I had more time than, than listings, and so that made it easy and really just continued to, to grow. And then as we had some new construction continuing to pop up. I'd go visit the builder reps, get all the floor plans so that, you know, here we are 12, 13 years later, and when we make a flyer for a house, we can scan the floor plan on the back. Uh, we're in a predominantly track subdivision, so a little bit easier to do than I know when I travel. Sometimes I hear different, uh, you know, parts of the country. I was up in Philadelphia, and no, nothing, uh, nothing like what we have here. So it can vary a little bit, but ultimately just geographically building a brand that's bigger than say your company name or, you know, any of that, you're really trying to build your own brand. So you become the household name. So when people think of real estate, you know, they think the Kenny Klaus team and we know based on NAR stats that 64% of people only interview one realtor, 17% you know, interview two. So you need to fill that space as kind of the community guy, the community real estate expert, and people will pay for that because that's what ultimately they're looking for. Uh, NAR also has a couple other stats that show that um, when what people are looking for in their realtor, 94% said they're looking for someone that has a local market knowledge, 77% said local area knowledge, and yet 37% said tech skills. And I find a lot of our industry is so focused on the best website and Facebook page and, and other things when reality of it is they just want to know, are you the guy that knows the area and can get me top dollar for my home?
and that's that's what we've built by adding value. And there's a lot of other moving parts to it. Um, you know, activities we do in the community, uh, business to business network events, things like that to just really add you know add value, not just send out crap like so many of us do with you know templated email newsletters and stuff that we don't even read, and yet we expect you know our client to read. Right. So a, a ton of stuff there. So number one, the one of the things I picked out that I thought was fantastic that most people don't do is you started off with a 12 month budget. You know, so so when I hear that from you, Kenny, I know that number one, you know, and, and the other thing you did, too, you said, hey, what can this be in one year? And what can this be in 10 years? So you really looked at this as a business. And, and what I have found with most agents is, you know, they, they get their license and they, then they, you know, they say, oh, I'm going to sell houses. But they don't think of it as a business. H- how did you have that thinking? I mean, you were just a FedEx guy, right? <laughs> you're you're, you're yeah, and, a delivery and, guy. And I'll be honest with you, for all my FedEx friends out there in the world, there's nothing wrong with that. It was a great, um, great company, great benefits, a lot of, a lot of neat relationships. And I learned a lot from it, but it was just the idea of if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you need to control your destiny. And I was just at family reunion and Gary Keller said something so simple, but yet so profound. He said, he who controls the lead source controls the lead. And I thought, man, our industry, if the shifts we've been through in the last six years, isn't that the truth? I mean, the banks were the lead source at one point. Right. Uh, that shifted. Craigslist shifted their algorithms. You've got Google changing stuff. You've got Zillow, Trulia into the market. If you don't control the lead source, you end up buying yourself out of business because you're trying to buy into those spaces that, let's face it, they're selling it to everybody. I mean, no matter how nice they are and um, how great they think, you know, they t- talk to you on the phone, they're selling you just – space with how many other realtors, how do you separate yourself from the pack? And so the two things with farming is that everyone says it's expensive. And I can tell you, we invested about $75,000 into our farm last year. Our net GCI, or not net, our gross GCI, so our GCI was 1.97. So to say it's expensive to me is, is ridiculous if you want to truly own a business. But like any business, it takes a couple years to build that business. So you don't start – you don't just say, I'm going to send a newsletter and wait for the listings to pop in. You're still seeding that farm. You're still doing open houses. You're door knocking. You're you know, still working on, on um, internet leads. You're still doing all those and, – and by the way, those never quit. Those are just – when you look at our business, it's like the hub and spoke system. So the hub is the farm, and the spokes are all those little pieces out there that we still do and you have to do. The key is a budget, and and I'll tell you, there's ways to partner with um, vendors to do this. I didn't do it in the beginning because nobody knew who I was or cared who I was. Um, But, you know, you talk about mortgage title, and if you walked in with an actual business plan and said, here's what I'm going to go do, here's the area I'm going to do it, I'm going to start small, we're going to lead with revenue, and we're going to grow this, and I'm going to do it for the next 12 months. Do you want to be part of that? Versus how many realtors go to them and say, here, pay for this, pay for this, pay for this, with no plan. Um, That was the vision. And I can tell you personally, we sent out our very first newsletter, or I did. uh, It was a little trifold before I grew it to the half page. Um, And I got a listing on the very first one. Wow. This is easy. This is great. Four months later, the house sells because I'm in a relatively new area where everyone's buying new construction. So you end up making no money on that. Um, you know, over you know, over the time of what it took, I sent out at about back then the cost was a lot different. We didn't have EDDM, we didn't have printing cost uh, as you know is much more affordable today than it was. I was spending about fifteen to sixteen hundred a month, so almost a dollar a piece to send out to the original farm. And I went seven more months without another listing, so nothing. I mean, wow. just just thinking. And I can tell you, talking to my wife and, and draining our savings and going, you know, am I, you know, no one likes me. What's wrong with my product? What are we doing? And I was still new. I mean, I was two years in the business, so I, I, I was pretty green. Um, but I, I just kept going. And on month seven, I got three listing appointments and converted all three. And to be honest, I didn't track it back then because I didn't know where this would lead. But I don't remember having less than three since then. Um, I took 22 listings in my farm last month, um, and so it's just it's become a different way to do business. It really, you truly go from having a real estate business, I mean, from having a job to actually having a predictable business in one of the most unpredictable businesses there is, which 
most realtors wake up every day and go, I don't know, hopefully someone will call or hopefully I'll get a new internet lead that, you know, 300 other agents aren't talking to and they'll <laughs> like me. Yeah. You know, it, it, I tell you, I'm a high eye in my disc profile. So relations are extremely important to me and being liked. It just, it's just part of my nature. And so when I go to a listing, like I did five listings yesterday and literally they're like, come list me type things. Like you walk in, they, they called you by the way, as the area expert commissions always know they're negotiable. I'd be honest. They rarely get negotiated. Um, and it's just a better way to do it. When they ask you questions, you're bulletproof. You already know all the schools. You know what's happening in the area, that, that Apple's building a new facility in our backyard, and it's going to employ 2,200 more people, and that Grand Canyon University is opening a new campus and where the freeways are. And, you know, I know the principal at the high school and the, the, uh, you know, the principal at the elementary school, and, and it's really hard for people to compete when you can throw out that kind of area knowledge because going back to NAR, you know, 93, it was 93, 94% local market, 77 local area. You dominate in those two categories, which is, you know, over 75% of what the general consumer is looking for. Got it. Well, that's, again, that's a ton of stuff. So, so, um, Let's talk a little you bit about. You can stop me anytime, so I get going because I love this. Stuff, oh, got it. So. <laughs> okay, I will. I will. I'll, I'll. I'll break in next time. So, so you know, I coach a few people, and you know, farm is something that you know, it's great to have a farm. It's great to own a farm. Here's what we do, right? So we take a three prong approach, right? So we door knock, we mail, and uh, and then we use uh, a service like. Um, uh, I can't even think of the name right now, uh, land voice data where we get the phone numbers in that yep. farms and then we drop inbound calls, right? So that's the R3. What do you do? I mean, certainly when you had the 1700, when you started, you had 1700 houses in your farm. You could do that. You could employ that, right? So you had the cash, you had the budget to do the mailers. Door knocking and cold calling are free. But now, I mean, so 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 what are, in terms of the hub and spoke, can you, let's, can you, can you break that down a little bit? So the, the truth of the matter is, and I'm not, uh, I, I say I'm not necessarily embarrassed to show. I never, and still today, have never door knocked. I think it's a genius idea. I think it makes a ton of sense. My business has grown to where uh, I, I am replacing myself. Actually, my replacement started yesterday to be my lead listing specialist for my farm because of the, the business that I think we can go to by me not by me leading this team versus, you know, really still actively out doing that. But my point is I've never door knocked. We've never done expired, never done FISBOs, which is why I have to hire someone because we're missing a huge part of the market. Because when I, we call, like once in a while, like I, I tried to call one this morning and expired real quick, um, you know, the brand recognition is so strong. We just haven't taken advantage of that. So what my, my approach is, is we're very involved in the communities. I donate about 30,000 bottles of water to the school. Um, you know, like if you go to the grocery store, we have little ad dividers. At this point in my business now, we have two wrapped vehicles and a moving truck that's wrapped. So we have three vehicles running around the neighborhood, hence kind of the FedEx concept where they need to be able to visually see your brand. Right. Um, very involved in all, like, when we sponsor teams, there are always teams that are from our community, so the parents are seeing our names. Um, I do a business-to-business -business network event. So the third Tuesday of every month at 7.30 in the morning, um, I actually – uh, ironically, you'll laugh at this probably, but I actually own um, a sports bar restaurant right in our farm, and I actually named it The Hub. So How that's funny. Actually what it's, what it, that's actually what it's called. And that was from my FedEx days because The Hub was in Memphis, which is where everything came into and went out from. And so we do a network meeting. So when I go out and I run my route that I call it, and I go visit, I walk to, through a shopping center. So in a sense, I'm door knocking, but it's business door knocking versus residential. And I just go meet the uh, the insurance agents, the you know the haircut place, the because they're always talking to people in the community, and you right. just you go visit them. The first, and and by the way, you're not walking in to say, hey, do you need to buy or sell real estate? You're walking in going, hey, I'm Kenny with 85209.com, your community connection. Of course, I've got my brand on my shirt and you know, logoed and that. Here's a couple of our newsletters, and here's an invitation to a free neighborhood network event. Let me know if you guys would like to you know come join us. And sometimes they kind of slough you off. Sometimes you don't get the right person. But I'm telling you, month two, month three, month four, those barriers are broken down because what do people view consistency as? Well, the general people go, oh, that's boring. But the reality is it builds trust. And as you build consistency, you build trust with people. And pretty soon they're like, okay, this guy keeps coming. What's he, what's he actually got going here? And a couple of weeks ago, the dry cleaner, for an example, 
you know, it's where I do my dry clean and get to know him. And I said, hey, would you mind if we just came in, shot a quick minute and a half, two minute video for you? We'll post it to the community Facebook page. We'll post it to our community page, which is 85209.com, which happens to be the zip code. And I said, we'll just talk a little bit about your business. I said, I didn't know you do wedding dresses, sleeping bags, comforters. You, know, you just look at like the, you know, the typical dress shirt and slacks. So we went in, shot a quick video posted it, um, you know, put all his contact, and now you share that, you know, through obviously YouTube and then into those different feeds, and then you send it to him. And in turn, the give-to-receive mentality, he turns around and says, hey, Kenny, I love what you're doing. You guys are doing great things. How about you print me anything that you want, and I'll staple it to every single bag that goes out of here for you. Holy smokes. Unbelievable. 10000 10, a month, and by the way, not every one of those is in my farm. So my point is, you know, I always say, and I don't know if this is an actual quote or not out there. I've never looked it up, but I always say action equals opportunities. If you're not taking actions, you're not going to create opportunities. They don't come find you typically. Yeah. You've got to be outgoing. So for me, it's just being out as a public figure. You know, Buffini and Joe Nego talk about, you know, running for mayor and running your mayor campaign. And it's kind of that same concept. You're running for you know, the real, you know I actually I get called the mayor quite a bit in our area. <laughs> like, you know, everybody knows you. That's the idea. I don't want to be the secret agent. I want everyone to know, hey, we're here. Um, in 2005, I actually bought a commercial building in our farm. So when we park our vehicles at the office and people are driving by. But my goal for today, too, is to make sure that people um, – don't focus on where we're at today, but focus on where we started. And I think that's kind of what you yeah, had mentioned. Is, right. you know, we started with 1,700, and, and we did that for two years. And I had started to carry 9, 10 listings, started closing some good business, and I just took that money and just made sure I was debt-free and then kept saving and saving. And then what happened is our farm started to spread into two more communities, so we started getting listings in there. So we so we'd made a decision to go to 5,000. And then we went to 8,000, and then 12,000, and 17,000, and now we run right around at the peak because we have two senior communities, so we do those seasonally in our farm. Um, we're at about 21.8, and that's going to continue to grow because we have a uh, huge new development just south of me in our in our farm that's being developed right now. So we've got about 750 new homes already in the ground. So so that farm will continue to grow, which means the opportunity rate you know continues to grow for us. Right, right. And, and let me break. Let me, sorry, and let the me just break in. Your... Go up that much. Right. Okay. So for people, let, let's go. I want to go back to the beginning here. I mean, one of the things that you keep touching on that I love that we can unpack in, in a minute is you keep talking about that brand, right? And, and a lot of people m confuse brand with their logo, right? A logo right. is not your brand, right? So you have your brand has colors. It has certainly has a logo. You have a slogan, all that stuff. But <clears throat> going back, right? So they're in my audience. We have both, you know, top producers like you that listen to the show and aspiring people. This this interview, I, I, I really want to kind of focus it on the, the people who are scratching their head about how to go out and build their farm. So no, number one, I've said it before, but you, you started with a budget. It's unbelievable to me, Kenny, that you you never door knocked. Right. So so here's here's the stats. And I'm sure, you know, you obviously know this, right? The 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 ter the time to pay back. Right. So if you're consistent with doing mailers. Uh, the time to 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 uh, the break even point is usually twelve to eighteen months. W would you agree with that? Absolutely. And, and again, and that's depending on multiple factors. But I mean, if you were just sending a piece of mail every month, um, there's statistics out there that yes, show that. And you know, Herb Sauter did that thing with the plumber, and 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 who's you know they made up a company name but kept mailing eight times and then called people and and so. Absolutely. I mean, people, again, it just has to be consistent. But I, I would say you can speed that process in multiple ways. And, and one is, you know, open houses in the air, even if they're not your listings, you, you, you borrow them from, you know, people that and then use your signs of door knocking, um, you know, walking the businesses, doing the network. I mean, you can increase the odds and turn that turn time up significantly. Right. But most people just want to send a newsletter. And by the way, ours is 100% custom. So all the stories come from what's happening hyper-locally because the World Wide Web has gotten so big it's actually contracted and people are afraid of it almost now because they don't know what to trust. So if they can trust the real estate brand and then see it out there, 
you know, it, it's extremely important. But no, I, I would say it's again. I, I did a twelve months just thinking I'm not going to quit for twelve months if I don't do one deal from this. But what if I could stay like that? And all I had to do was a five mile radius is where I could do you know two hundred fifty three hundred sides a year. What would be that like from a productivity standpoint? I mean, literally, I did five listings yesterday. Unbelievable, um, man. I probably racked up maybe maybe eight miles on my odometer. I mean, and, and they're all just right here. So, I mean, literally the one I could have walked over to is from my office. It's literally right on the next block over. So um, when you talk about going back to the FedEx days of efficiency, I mean, they're built on efficiency. Everything's time. You've got you to keep moving. And, and so for me, the efficiencies were – why try to know every house, every builder, every style, every neighborhood, every community, if there's 1,400 sales in my geographic area, in my two zip codes that I farm, what percentage of that do I possibly need before having to go elsewhere? Now, <clears throat> with that being said, we are expanding right now because I own about 105 of the zip codes in the valley, like .com, so we're, we're actually creating farm routes for our team, kind of redefining the model of – you know, listing agent, buyer agent, where we're creating farm agent, and it's their job. So we just started a second farm, and a third one starts July 1st, but I'm planning to continue to grow that because I can get, you know, top people to go run those while still working within our team. So that's right. a little bit different dynamic right now, but anyway. So, yeah, so again, let's, let's I want to back, you, you know, I know you you have all kinds of exciting stuff happening right now, and your business is expanding, and, and, and you, you know, you kind of are going towards that. But going back, so you didn't door knock. What you did do, though, is you went in sort of business to business, said, hey, I'm Kenny. Now, today you own this this restaurant and bar, which is very, very cool. I mean, a lot of people, that's the dream of a lot of people. Be prior to owning that, you know, what kind of events, I know you, you put on, you did activities, you, you put on events, you know, to get to build community. What yeah. kind of stuff um, did you do early on when you went into those businesses? You know, you said, hey, I'm Kenny, I'm, you know, talk to us about that. Because, because look, door knocking is not for everybody, right? It certainly Absolutely. wasn't for you. So, I, and I will tell you, door knocking, if you're handing someone a newsletter, say, hey, I want to make sure you got your monthly newsletter, it's a lot easier conversation than worrying about what you're going to talk to them about. It seeds the conversation because my agent on my team now that's running our new farm, that's what she's required to do is 50 door knocks a week, um, she, uh, 10 business visits, and 10 home visits. And then we review that every Wednesday that she's accomplished that goal because we want to quick start this farm. We're in our fourth month. We've had one appointment. So we're, it's not, you know, we want to speed this up. So we're just getting going with some traction. But so when I'd walk into a business, you know, I just invite them, A, to the network meeting. Two is I'd have a little little thing that we get from Staples, a little office supply thing with our newsletters. And I'd say, hey, do you mind if I put, you know, a stand in your business with community newsletters? Well, hmm. guess what that forces me to do? Revisit every month to refill it. And right. so over time, it built that relationship. And then because I didn't have listings, um, I made these big A-frames, and it just said, free list of area homes for sale. In the very first community that I that I farmed, we had a golf course in it. So the, I got to know the golf course guy real well, and I'd bring people up there for lunch, and he'd refer to It just it was a great relationship, still is today. But he would let me sit out in the parking lot. At the time, I was with Remax, so I had a big eight-foot balloon. I'd blow that up. I had my golf cart logoed. Um, I had a little lifted golf cart, and people would literally pull up because my vision was, well, if I, I can sit one open house where I could literally have all these houses open, and if nothing else, the sellers were seeing me do something. And that was the key is most agents, what do they say? You list it and hope someone else sells it, where I wanted them to see that I'm out trying to do what I can to generate you know, opportunities. So those were some pretty simple things in the beginning because, like I said, I didn't have the listing inventory, but I would certainly go visit listings. And I can tell you when a listing has been on the market for 90 days, and I'm previewing their listing and leaving my card as the local market guy, I got to tell you, that definitely converts some opportunities too because what's the next complaint? You know, they never show my listing. So right. now if they see the local guy and your cards in their house, two and two get put together pretty quick. So as far as other activities, you know, it's really just being like in the, in the program for the football team, donating water. So you're building those relationships, uh, videoing the coach before the season started. Yeah, that's a good um, one. You know, and so every year, and that one gets our most hits as I go over and, hey, today we're at Desert Ridge High School. We're going to interview Jeremy Hathcock, the football coach. Hey, Jeremy, tell us about the upcoming season. He loves it. He talks about it a little bit. In fact, this last year, when he got done, he goes, 
and after the games, you know, we'll all be at the hub bar and grill. And so it's pretty <laughs> funny. But it's amazing how when you give like that, people just, they want to give back. It's very... Uh, relational. Um, so do you, so well, hold on. So on that, I think that's a fantastic idea. Go out and interview the local coach. Um, and I'm, and I'm sure that's the high school coach. Um, yep. What do you do? Do you, do you, I mean, you could certainly do a whole, you know, throughout the season, you could do a whole series of, of uh, videos and interviews. Do you do that? Or do you, is it just the one with a coach at the beginning of the season? So we do a series of business videos, but we don't follow like the team throughout the year or anything like that. I mean, those are all genius ideas and, 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 and people love to connect with their kids and families. And it, to be honest, it's just been a matter of time. And right. right now, like I said, I've been working, I've been interviewing for, the, for quite a while and we just made the offer. The guy, our, Corey just started yesterday with the idea of being the lead listing agent for our team so that I can be working on those kind of projects going out interviewing helping with those things because i think it's key and it's such an easier sell when you've met the person a year before because you were shooting a video about their business and then they decide they're selling their house I mean, you, you it's such a different appointment than yeah. interviewing if you will yeah yeah you know? yeah i totally right i completely agree i mean and look, this is why i mean your claim to fame kenny is that you are the farming pro so that's that's why i wanted you on the show and i, was, I want to dig into this stuff now um so you mentioned earlier, right? So the principal knows you, the principal of all the schools know you. I mean, I, this is something I tell the people that I coach. I said, you know, I would love for your mug, you know, go create a mug with your, you know, with your brand on it. And it should be sitting on the the local elementary school, the, the high school. It should be sitting on the principal's desk. Right. What, what kind of stuff do you do for, you know, to create community around, around other, you know, around the schools and how important is that piece? Well, so like, for example, uh, two years ago, um, I, uh, I'm a big Pittsburgh Steeler fan, like it or not. And so we obviously have our terrible towels. And so we made Jag rags, which our team's the Jaguars. So I made 3,000 of those, donated them to um, the band. And then the band ended up selling them at the games. And the, the idea was so much of the stuff we were doing got thrown away. So I had to invest about three times the money you know, it was about a dollar a, a rag. They sold them for $2 a piece. So I'm in huge with the band because they make 100% of that as profit back to them because they had, they had no cost. They just set up in the front and sell the Jag rags. The interesting thing today is you go out and show houses in the community, and you'll see those things pinned up on the kids' bedroom walls and things like that. So they got funny. huge residual value, plus people brought them back. We did do pom-poms the year before. The problem is you got high school kids fighting with them and it left crap all over the parking lot and everything. So that one wasn't so good. Um, like I said, we do, we do the water bottles. We do child at play signs. So we offer people to come pick them up. We just order the yellow corrugated signs. We put our sticker on them, um, you know, compliments, Kenny Klaus team. And in, in be honest with you, there's a small percentage that actually come pick them up, but what it gets when I go to appointments and stuff, like, oh, yeah, we saw you were giving out those child at play signs. Or it, it's, honestly, it's more buzz than it is, you know, actual cost as far as, you know, you know you're not giving out 100 of them. And you, you think, okay, we got 20,000 people. What if they all came in? They just, it just doesn't work that way. But you still get the publicity from it. Right. We also do, like for summer, you know, we're obviously in a big state with a lot of drownings and stuff. So we had this idea of our water watcher tags and so they're just a little tag laminated has our logo cpr on the back and on the front it says i'm the water watcher i forget exactly what it says and we have little lanyards with klaus team all around it and then we give those out and those actually do get picked up um we do take those out give them out at our network meetings things like that and the idea is if me and you are at a family party when do most drownings happen during those times and so um you know hey toby you're the water watcher for the next 15 minutes and you are that tag and we can all socialize and then when it's my turn i go take my turn simple cost effective huge value to the community it's not crap you're giving out it actually has a purpose so those have been fantastic and easy to produce people can pop by our office pick them up and then one thing we do every month, we do a, a, a plastic move-in bucket that my wife actually puts together. And so she just goes to the dollar store. We've got a list of about 20 items, toilet paper, paper towel, hammer, nails, um, rubber gloves, dish soap, just basic fundamentals when people move in that first day into their new home and everything's packed and they can't find it. And then inside of there, 
when I do my network meetings or I visit my businesses, I tell them about these buckets. And so they're allowed to put any marketing stuff they want in there. So like the golf course gives a free round of golf. Oh, I, give a 25, I give a $25 gift card to the hub, uh, my carpet cleaner, um, you know, every resource of people. And so I'm just giving to those, all those businesses. So when you've got a new contractor or something, hey, you got something like my pest control guy, he gives a free initial service, pool guy. Hey, I'll come help you with startup, whether you use me or not, just to show you, you know, how everything works. Um, so it's just, you know, it's simple stuff like that. that, is, that but that is genius, man. That is, that is so genius. I mean, and going back real quick. So, you know, the, the water watcher thing, it almost like in terms of there's so many things you could do around, you know, the school, right? Um, you know, you, you could have people, you could hire a trainer and teach, uh, you know, put on a free CPR class or, or, you know, I, I don't, you know, yep. Yep. there's so many things you could do to build community. I, I again, I, I think no wonder, you know, you are known for <laughs> this farming stuff. Um, so you, well, you just become the resource. So what happens is all these, like the little league teams, all of them know us now. So they send us when their signups are. And if we have room, we'll print the newsletter. If not, we'll do a little blurb in the newsletter. And then we'll say, go to 85209.com for the full story or for the registration form or that kind of stuff. But you're talking about connecting all those groups because we become kind of like a local newspaper, if you will. But it's in a, it's in a newsletter. Um, I do actually have a program um, I don't necessarily want to sell it on this call or share it, but we do have a, a program that we created that I actually have samples of all of our newsletters. We actually have samples of the Water Watcher tag. Mm. We, actually have, we actually have the move-in bucket literally like in a recipe card so you could print it off and go to the dollar store and just buy everything. We've tried to make it very easy to share this stuff because, again, I just want to see people doing it. I think the market is better served when you have local people who have a vested interest and care, and I think ultimately the consumers serve better. And I think we get a better reputation as realtors, as you know, as a profession, versus you know, everybody's trying to discount everybody to death, and, and nobody wins. Right. Um, and I think that the key to it, and I had a buddy of mine in Scottsdale, um, Brian, tell me, he goes, you know, I, after going through your class and, and knowing you personally, I see why. I, I think that what came out to me is, yes, there's a lot of great activities, and yes, it's a lot of it doesn't cost hardly anything but is that it's genuinely authentic. Like, like you really do care about the community. I said, well, of course I do. I live in it. My office is in it. My restaurant's in it. My kids go to school here. I said, I generally have a vested interest to make this place successful. And I can tell you if I'm sitting down at, you know, your house, Toby, and then you, and I'm the farming guy in your area. And I said, look, you know, I own 12 properties in this area. Believe me, if anybody has a vested interest in pushing values, it's me. It's going to be hard for you to go, yeah, this guy, He's not going to just lowball and try to quick sell our house. He cares because it affects him times 12 also. And so I think it's a big deal when people know how much you care about the community. And I get it all the time, you know, oh, you did this for the band or, oh, you you know, we know you do this. And and I can tell you one of our biggest events, I have my moving truck in the high school band um, for graduation. They did it at ASU. And so – they use my truck. They load up all the band equipment. I said, yeah, no problem. Use it. You know, whatever you need. We come walking out of graduation. You're talking 600 and some kids. So figure, you know, 3,000 people come out of this uh, Wells Fargo auditorium there at ASU. Yeah. There's my truck literally parked in the very front. The ramp's out, and they're reloading the band equipment after the event. And I can tell you how many friends and people I had there were like, Holy cow, dude, you couldn't have paid for that. I mean, that's sitting right. Every family's walking out of there, and there's the side of our truck with our logo all over it, and, you know, use this truck for free and all that. And to be honest, a high percentage know that I didn't have any kids in the band. It's just, you know, hey, we're a resource. And so, so there's been some really neat things that you don't even intentionally do, they just end up happening, you know, right. because you're out doing the right thing consistently. Right. That's awesome. Let me break in here with a message from our sponsor. Our sponsor, Discover Publications, will create a customized, branded, 12-page newspaper that will be sent out to your farm and sphere. Now, this paper is cheaper than you think. For slightly more than the cost of a stamp, you can start sending out curated content and always stay top of mind. Never lose a deal again because that prospect just happened to forget that you were in real estate or misplaced your number. Go check them out at discoverpubs.com. Okay, Kenny, here's, here's, here's a question I have for you. So you have, and again, this is, I, I want to help, I, I want to use all your great stuff and help 
people out in the audience, right, to, to, to somehow jumpstart their farm. So if you look at these buckets, right, so you did the, biz, the B2B thing. You went and walked into businesses. You added value. Um, you did the whole – you're doing all this fantastic stuff in the schools. Um, you know, you have, I guess I would think – um, so you have businesses, you have schools, uh, you know, you have, I, I have mom here written down. I don't know if that's a, a bucket, but if somebody's, you know, everybody, they have limited time. If they're going to kind of follow or try to, you know, copy your or replicate your methods, where should they start? Should they, you know, put a bunch of effort in the schools? Should they put a bunch of effort in, you know, meeting all the businesses? And, and, and look, I know that, you know, 90, what it was that stat, 97% of people hire, the, they want the local market knowledge. Yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. It's like 94 or something. I have it in one of my slides, but, you know honesty and, and communication, those are the only couple things, and they're huge, obviously, but right above that. And then the next thing that is controllable um, like that is, you know, that they want top of mind. They want to know who's the local guy because we know 64% are only interviewing one, and if, six, and if 17 more are interviewing two, and you've got to be top of mind. And so, but, but to say what's most important, I would say um, brand come up with your brand because the first newsletter that goes out and what you're doing, you need to make sure that it's a brand that sticks, make it clean, simple. There's companies out there that obviously help you design it. We did it under my name. There's mixed feelings in the industry about, you know, do you brand an entity like, you know, the performance team versus the Kenny Klaus team? You know, I still believe me. And Gary always says, you know, people do business in local markets with local people, with local realtors. And so the company brand isn't nearly – meaning like KW or Remax or is nearly as predominant, at least here, um, than, than, than your own individual. Cause they want to, who's the go-to guy, who, who do we, who can we talk to? So I think developing your brand, making sure, you know, you got a Facebook page for the community, a website, most of that stuff is relatively inexpensive in today's world when it comes to that. Um, we've got a resource for a community website. If people go to like 85209.com, you know, I can hook them up. Yeah, I mean, you just, you know, the, the thing is, is you want, you know, you want people to see the local stuff. And, and I think that, you know, building some of those things is important. And then when you send out that print material, you know, that's just to remind them to go back and visit those sites. But I'll tell you, the biggest thing that I teach to in my, in my little class that we do is the newsletter, so many people do 100% real estate. And I will tell you, that you're going to appeal to a certain percentage that are looking at that stuff. But that feels like a sales thing to me. Like I feel like when I'm reading that, I'm waiting for them to jump out and call me or start spamming my email or stuff like that. Yeah. Um, my newsletter is very well-rounded in my opinion. It's very, um, I'd say it's professional, but it's very uh, graphically like vibrant. I mean, it looks good. And what happens is it makes it from the mailbox into the kitchen table versus, you know, mailbox to the garbage on the way into the house. Right. You look real quick and toss it. Because I get people go, oh, my husband gets home. He, you know, every month we look forward to reading that, what's happening with local businesses, what you kind of obviously what the real estate thing's doing, you know, what events are coming up in the area, um, you know, things like that. And so I think that it's interesting that uh, we kind of fly under the radar as a marketing piece. We come across as a community resource. And so there's that trust and we get more shelf. Like, like I have one guy say he's been collecting them for like the last seven years. He's like, I have every single issue you've ever done <laughs> that is, for the last seven years. Oh my God. And it's like, it's like collector items. So we're actually doing a contest because I do a calendar magnet every month or every year, uh, have since 2001. Well, here I just gave it away, but so we were going to send out a thing in the newsletter and say, who can, who can take a picture with the oldest magnet and then guess what year the first one went out. Um, just to see, you know, just to get interaction and it's fun. And, and cause we go to houses, like my agents will be out showing buyers in the community and they'll take a picture of the refrigerator and go, look, there's your magnet. I may not even have the house listed, but just that people hold on to it. Cause you know, everybody's got a friend, a family, you're not going to get anybody who tells you they're getting, you know, market share of, you know, 50% or 30% or whatever. I can tell you, you know, we were at 17% last year. Um, and, and had a good, you know, had a good business from it. So the key to it is consistently, but I will tell you the other thing with, with our farm is when the market has shifted, which, you know, obviously here we got just nailed with the foreclosures and I didn't have any REO accounts. I didn't have all the Fannie, Freddie, B of A, Wells, all that. I was just doing traditional real estate. I kind of missed that whole boat because our business really didn't 
we just had to adjust to the short sale market. And so I started teaching classes. Well, guess what? I already had an audience of 18,000 to 20,000 people reading my newsletter that trusted us. Now a distressed market comes. Who are they going to call, especially when there's no cost to them? And so at the golf course, we have a clubhouse. So I would just do, you know, avoid foreclosure, know your options. And we had a real estate attorney, a CPA, and myself. And we would do anywhere from six to 26 people show up, you know, sometimes twice a month. And literally the conversion rate was unbelievable because you're giving them all these questions that they had that they saw on the Internet and all the crap that's going on. So about a year ago, I went and, 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 say, and but you know you already you are a trusted you know you you've already they right. have trust with you right right so yeah. and that's the other key. So what happened? I was up at my cabin and I was it's usually where I do my best thinking, and so I'm like, okay, we went through that. How do I get ahead of this next thing? Because you're always trying to look at like what's next, and usually I'm the guy that reacts to it versus kind of gets ahead of it in a lot of cases and. Like I, I, I guess I relate that to the REOs because I wasn't applying to any of them. I didn't even know all about all that stuff. But I came up with this idea, and I registered this domain name called roadbackhome.com. So now I get in two weeks, we have another class, and we're just out that same median. Because, again, keep in mind now we have this trusted audience. So we put a message in there about, hey, you know, when can you buy again? Come out to our free class, roadbackhome.com. We're going to help you get on the road back home. And it's foreclosure, bankruptcy, short sale, or first-time buyers. And people can come out. We have a lender there. They actually pull credit on site. Mm. Um, and this way the people leave there, if nothing else, with light at the end of the tunnel. They know when their seasoning date is, what they need to do. When you know, Oh, I, I got 14 more months. Oh, then I won't sign a two-year lease. Uh, they leave so empowered, I and mean, it has been. We closed three last month from it. And it was just phenomenal because, and it helps my buyer agent. It has nothing to do with me. It's not listings. It's all buyer side, but it's just getting people to now trust us to say, what do we need to do? You know, we we were embarrassed. We went through this. You know, well, here's the simple things. And and a lot of times, to be honest with you, the lender pulls it, and then it was re reported as a foreclosure when it was really just a short sale. And so now it gives us time to get that off their credit and get right. it fixed. And, but again, you're taking a vested interest in, in people, and it's, it's actually been a, a great feel-good program, to be real honest with yeah. you. Yeah, well, I mean, and, and that speaks to your high eye. Um, so yeah. I'm, I'm going to ask you this question, because I, I, you do get on a roll, Kenny, and I, I feel bad about cutting you off, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you one question, that, but there's going to be three pieces, and these are okay. really three. So for, for the farm, I want to talk about help us determine the size that we should start with, the budget we should have before we start and how to determine it, right? In terms of uh, figuring out the turn because uh, different MLSs are different. And, you know, I have uh, uh, coaching clients in Florida. They can't figure out the turn for some reason. Um, you know, I have a guy in Canada can't figure out the turn because just their MLS is differently. So, so size budget we should have and, and uh, what turn we're looking for and how to do that. Absolutely. No, the, those three great questions, and, and certainly we've, got, uh, we've actually got worksheets in our program that people can just go plug those things in, and you can actually copy from EDDM when you're talking about picking routes and sizes. Um, and for those who aren't familiar with EDDM, it's just every door direct through the U.S. Post Office. But size is really determined by your budget, for one thing. If your budget's 1000 a month, then you can just back it up and say, how many homes will that get me? It's kind of like qualifying for a mortgage, you know? It's like, if I got $1,000 a month where I got two other partners who will each put in, you know, 500 so we got $2,000 a month, how many, how many newsletters can we print for 2000 a month, and then what geographic area can we cover for that? And obviously looking back, you know, average sales price is huge. I think proximity to your farm is huge because, I mean, you, you don't want to say, yeah, I'm the local guy, and then I drive, you know, a half hour home every night. Right. Um, I think that's important. Plus, the way to know the local stories and what's happened is to be, you know, at least close to the community. You may not have to live in it, but close. So I would say the budget is going to determine the size in the beginning. Okay. Um, and then we just led with revenue. And as far as your turnover rates, a lot of it depends on average sales price, too. I mean, for me, you know, on our buy side, we're just under 200. On the list side, we're about two and a quarter. Um, so, you know, my turnover rates have to be a little bit higher. Like, I'm running about 7%. Um, but if you were in a, you know, $500,000 neighborhood and you could pick up, you know, 10 to 12, 15% market share, it might be able to be 5%. Anything much less than that, you know, it's just not enough, you know, at bats for you. Right. So, you know, I would say 
everyone will tell you to shoot for 10. I just don't see 10 very often, to be honest with you. Gotcha. I see more, I see more four to six, five to seven range. Um, and most of the people I talk to, they, they kind of fits in there. And then, like I said, you just, then EDDM kind of helps you pick it. So once you go on EDDM, it'll show you, assuming that that's what someone has to use, which is the most cost effective, it'll tell you, like you click on those routes and it'll kind of build your farm in that subdivision. So some of it may spill over into the next little area, but you know, big deal, it works. And then it'll actually tell you your postage rate right on there when you look at it. So you can take the postage rate, get with your printer, and if you talk to your printer, just negotiate. If anyone needs a referral for a national one, and I have that, a guy in, in Texas. Um, but, you know, negotiate with your printer. Say, hey, look, I'm going to go do this for 12 months. What kind of deal you can give me for being consistent? And those are all negotiable things. And this EDDM that you're talking about, this is, uh, I'm, I'm looking at it right now, this is the U, the the postal service thing. Right. So what they came out with was you don't have to individually address everything. It's just, it's saturation. It's basically you're taking say route, you know, 227, for example, and you're, you're going in every mailbox they serve. So when you click on route 227 on that map in your area, it'll tell you how many homes and you click on say three or four routes and that gets you to, you know, 2,500 homes, it'll tell you what the postal budget is. Then you go figure out what's my newsletter going to cost. My newsletter going to cost, 50 cents a piece in the beginning and then you know 15 cents for postage so I'm at 65 cents a piece you know how can that uh, you know how can that you know affect right. it and so so that's you just brilliant. gotta work it backwards that's brilliant I love it man I don't know how you found I mean that's this is a that's a little hack that I you know that uh, I'd never heard of before just using this usps.com you know eddm thing so <clears throat> And there is some restrictions. So, I mean, people need to look at it. It's up to 5,000 a day is what you can ship. So, like, for us, we have to break it out. One of our routes, they break it out in two days. But our printer does all that now and delivers it for us to them and all that. Um, so, you know, there are a few requirements. So make sure and get you know, versed in that. But it's definitely the most affordable way to go. Got it. Okay. And then, and then in terms of, you know, people struggle with that, right? Just like on social media, right? People struggle finding their voice, right? What do I say? How do I say it? You know, with your stuff, right? You're doing all this community, um, you know, all this community stuff, you know, you're going out you, for your newsletter. I'm talking about content right now, Kenny. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you go interview the, the coach, you could repurpose some of that content and throw it in your newsletter. What have you found is effective? What should people have in that newsletter? And by the way, how do we see one of yours? I don't know. If, I don't know if you want to, to broadcast that or not. But, you know, is it possible for, you know, our audience to, to see how you do it? So I, I just tell you real quick, and I'll just give a, a quick plug for our thing if you don't care. We, no. We, okay. So uh, about a year ago, I started this with this idea because what happened is with Keller Williams, they're very good about training and educating. So I started getting flown around the country to teach KW agents. And what happened is the good intentions turned into a lot of work because everyone's calling, emailing, and Facebook messaging. How do you do this? How do you do that? And I thought, I just can't continue down this road because I'm going to end up offending people, and that's not my nature or my goal. So I woke up one morning and I said, I wonder if there's a designation for like farming because it's what I'm known for. It's what I love doing. And there wasn't. So I kind of just created our own at this point called Certified Local Market Experts. So it's CLME.com, mm. which stands for just Certified Local Market Expert. And I named it that because if I knew 94% of consumers want the local market expert, why not have a designation that actually speaks directly to them? Like, yeah. hey, by the way, I'm certified as the local market expert. Um, on there, you know, we have, you know, eight core classes, and then we actually have my whole business in a box, action plans, bonus webinars, monthly, every, the marketing ideas I just shared with you, we actually have them on there broken down, and then every month we try to share a new marketing idea. And the benefit to this is it's not just my ideas. I now get to talk to top farming people throughout the country, and they all will share their ideas with me. So we've got, actually got newsletter samples on there. Um, they're going to be locked unless someone is – um, subscribe to the service. So I'm, I'm trying to think how to work around that. And Scott, my partner's out sick today. Um, but all that stuff is there. Um, we have it for $5.99 for the annual thing. Um, I created a coupon code super for you guys, for your group. Awesome. So it takes 150 bucks off to help out a little bit. Awesome. But I think it's literally 13 years of my growth and my experience is broken down into eight webinars. And then more importantly is like the private Facebook collaboration page where you can go in. Like we've got a guy that's 
his brokers making him change his, his platform of how he's branding his name. And they, so anyway, he's asking questions, how do I do this? And it's just, everyone jumps in and starts helping each other. And that was really the ongoing value is this was meant to be a perpetual thing because farming isn't a market of the moment. You know, we had CDP and we had other things out there. This is meant to continue to build. So we've got different postcards we've done that other agents have done. Of course, resources to share, you know, with, with each other as far as, hey, if you're looking for a referral in another city, see if you can find a, you know, a CLME agent who, who knows that area. Um, so anyway, that's where all the newsletters are. Um, our main one is, is literally two sheets of paper folded in half. The new one, and, and, and a little tweak to that is my original farm is in what's called a rural route still. So it's kind of like EDDM, but it's, it's actually – um, a little bit easier than that because there's no daily limit. The new farm is EDDM, and so the size of the newsletter is very similar. It's just a little bit bigger, and that's just based on their requirements. But they're basically about a sheet of paper folded and half the, the, the new newsletter. The existing one is two sheets of paper, so if you can picture it folded in half, it gives you eight pages. It creates a little booklet. Got it. And we've stayed with the booklet idea because it's different. Uh, most pre-done companies out there either send like a newspaper or a full sheet of paper. Uh, to ours, we wanted it to actually be something they could sit down and read and page through. And so we created this little booklet idea, and it's been consistently like that since the second issue back in uh, July of 2001. Got it, man. I, hey, Kenny, I love this. I, I love what you're doing here. And I think everybody, you know, if you like this, I think you should go to CLME.com and uh, and use that use that uh, code super, you know, buy it, get 150 bucks off. I'm going to have this actually on on my web show notes for you, Kenny. Um, so, you know, and I'll tell you, I think I could help you make this better. You know, here's what I'd like to see is, um, you know, there's a way to give people sort of a peek into like, you know, I'm looking at December, except I'm looking at your newsletters, right? And it's just yep. totally locked, right? If there was a way that I could kind of see a peak, but not see the whole thing, I think you would get more conversions. I think that's right. for everything. So um, anyhow, hey, Kenny. Well, the first I, I, webinar is actually free that's on there of the first class. So if somebody goes on and wants to take the introduction, that, there's, that one's free. And then it's got a PDF, some homework on it. But yeah, I think the idea of, of trying to see a, you know example of the newsletter um, you know, I don't have a problem. Like I said, I have no problem sharing any of this. I just want to see people take action and go do something about it because it makes, you know, just it's just a better way of life. I'll tell you, I mean, I, I, and again, I don't want to sound like one of those guys that go, oh, I only work, you know, three months out of the year now and all that crap. But the reality of it is you know, I get dressed, I go to work every day, but I, like I'm leaving in two weeks for a week vacation. And I'll tell you, our business just doesn't stop because people are calling going, hey, we want to be part of that system. We want, to, we, we don't want our home marketed through your system you know, that you've created and we know you do a lot of good things for the community and you care about the community. It just puts things on more autopilot where, you know, I don't do a lot of outgoing marketing anymore like I used to. And that's why hiring someone now to kind of run my route and re-engage it. I know we can take it up to 30, 35, 40 listings a month in our farm just because there's enough business in our farm right now. It's just we need to get back out in front of people more consistently. And I think when you start small, you know, just be sincere. I mean, make sure you, you, know, you show up every day. You know, I went to Catholic grade school, high school, and I did FedEx for 13 years. I mean, I barely learned how to dress myself in the last few years because everything was uniform. And so if you, you know, see me every day, it's slacks and a polo shirt with my logo on it embroidered it's just simple it's consistent but people see it actually while we were standing here um, i'll admit it, i checked an email and uh, one of my agents was at a dance recital and they saw our logo on her shirt and uh looks like about a three hundred fifty thousand dollar listing appointment that uh, they want us to set um nice so, so i mean it just happens i mean and the interesting thing too that i we didn't share and i just want to share real quick is that when you're farming the other thing that don't get confused. You're not locked into a geographic area. It's the hub. It creates all these other opportunities. I mean, we picked right. up builders. We picked up investors. We picked up sales all over the valley because people live in our farm and go, hey, do you, do you work this area over here? Oh, absolutely. Or, hey, can you show us houses over here? Oh, absolutely. Hey, I have a friend over here in Gilbert. You know, they need to sell their house. You know, oh, yeah, absolutely. So it just creates, you know, that again you're not locked into one area right. but it's nice to have that foundation of 
22 listings a month coming in. We wrote 22 buyer sides last month. It's nice to have that consistency. It gives you a better quality of team, a better quality of life, um, because it's more predictable. Like I said, you're not chasing business every month. And I don't start January going, what am I going to do this year? I'm going to go, okay, I've got 250 listing appointments at a minimum I'm going to do this year. Let's get to work. And it's it's something I can plan on versus, you know, uh uh-oh, where do I start January next year? Is it at zero again? I mean, we're already – it just doesn't work like that anymore. And we do the magnets, like I said. I think those are big. I know they're kind of silly and people say, but it's just – you know, I do a lot of handwritten notes. I'm a Buffini guy, and I believe in the relationships. And so the magnets fit in our little handwritten notes. But I'll tell you, those are so simple, and it's a way for someone to get a hold of you 24-7. Just a quick – you know, calendar, website, phone number, your logo, drop it in those handwritten notes, send it out with the newsletter, um, you know, and, and every time you visit a business, you drop them. Because like you said, um, we just hired a guy from our farm that um, he's been with me just over a year. He was a fifth grade teacher at the elementary school on our farm. And he's, dude, I have to laugh. Cause he ended up having my son and we hit it off. And, and he's like, and then like the next year, he's like, hey, what do you think about me getting into this? And he goes, I go into the lunchroom at Augusta Ranch and there's like 12 of your magnets on the fridge from all these years. And, and who moves a lot? Teachers. I mean, right. it happens all the time. Yeah. So there's you know, just countless resources, but you know, just don't have a shotgun approach. I mean, just laser focus. You know, Gary Keller wrote a book called The One Thing, and it hit me. That's actually when I started CLME because I went, that has been my one thing. has been farming. It's not sexy to everybody, but now that the market shifted, people are coming to us going, how do you do this stuff? And it's like, but you're just consistent. You just, just it, then you can do the sexy stuff. You can do the fun stuff. Yeah. But it's just, you know, it's simple. And I think that, uh, um, you know, it's been my one thing. And when you think about how many people out there have niche marketing ideas, and those are the guys that are known in the industry. Yeah, they, you've got to be known niche. for something. You have to have but a Why not just be known in a geographic area that produces, you know, 300 sales a year? I mean, in my case, 1,400 sales a year in my two zip codes, I don't need to run all over the valley. I can just focus on this area. Right, right. And look, you know, I did a show where I, I you know, uh, and I don't, you may not uh, approve of this message, but, you know, I did a show and said, hey, look, you can create, go get a geographic farm, but you can also turn that inside out and say, and focus on a demographic, right? And really the show was about about targeting millennials. Now, it, it, it you, you know, you could be known for that, the millennial guy. But Kenny, listen, I, I don't want to take too much of your time. I know you got a ton of stuff going on. I, I want to really, really thank you for coming on the show. I know that everybody in the audience is going to get tons of value from it. And, you know, and look, everybody in the audience, if you've liked what Kenny has shared here, look, reach out to him and say thank you. You know, uh, do you have a, are you on Twitter, Kenny? Yeah, I, and I'm terrible at that one. I think it's just my name, Kenny Klaus at, and then uh, Facebook. I know I'm at the five thousand or whatever, but they can go to our, uh, um, you know, our uh, team page, the Kenny Klaus team Facebook page. Got it. And then so. and then go check out that CLME. Um, I think I might, you know, I, I don't sell real estate, Kenny. I just do the show, uh, but I right. might do it just to, you know, to, I might pay you just to, to for me to get you know a little bit better at my craft here of interviewing people. <laughs> Well, like I said, I you know, if you're interested, you know, talk to me, and I'll, I'll we'll we'll talk about that more. But you know, the whole idea was it's it's I'm not trying to sell something to make money. I'm trying to sell something to help better people's right. lives. I just couldn't do it one person at a time exactly and have the right. impact. Yep. But I'll be honest with you, I live and breathe this stuff every day, and I'm refining it and trying to get better. And truthfully, you know, we succeed through others. So I'm trying to learn. The more we share, the more we grow. And I'll tell you, by sharing this stuff. I'm getting stuff back. I just got stuff from a lady in Florida who's doing some stickers on AC units, like when to change the filters. And there's just all kinds of great ideas that realtors are doing in their communities. If I can just be the hub of that where you can just go to this site and go, what marketing idea do I need for this month and download it? It's already done. It's tested and just go do it. I mean, it's, uh, that's what my goal is. I mean, realtors, we want turnkey solutions. I mean, yeah. we don't want to have to think about all this stuff, but I will tell you, um, you know, the idea is to continue to add value to this through others and then do the, you know, we're like, I think we're interviewing, oh, we have an interview coming up, I think with Michael Mayer wrote seven levels of communication. Um, we've got, you know, we're interviewing different people too, to try to add some value through those kind of like what you're doing. I mean, the idea is top people who are doing it, but like with him, for example, you talk about farming, he is like database farming. So he is niche farming, his database. And so there's, there's more than just geographic. And I agree 100%. There's more ways to farm than just geographic. It just happens to be what, what made sense to me and worked. Yeah. So. Got it. So, 
anyway, man, I appreciate it. It's a, it's an honor to be part of your group and share and, uh, anything I can do to help out in the future or whatever, you just let me know. And, and uh, we'll keep rocking. Yeah. Hey, look, uh, here's, uh, and again, I'm, we're still recording, but here's how you can help me out. And you can, we can do it offline, but I need, I need more people like you on the show. I'm having a hard time. Not everybody, Kenny, wants to give back. I've, I've, t- I've met other people, Kenny, that have a very unique way of farming. And I found this out through other people. I reach out to that person. I say, hey, come on my show. And they're like, I'm not going to tell anybody what I do. Because they're, right. they're, they're afraid. I mean, they're scared that people are going to copy them. So, you know, I, again, I'm having a hard time. And uh, if you can, you know, put me on the, the, the tail of some other people that you think would be great for the show, I would, I would be in debt to you. Well, it's interesting the name of your, your site. And I don't know if you're familiar with the Callaways or not here locally in Arizona. But they are the, the, probably the top, probably the best people in our industry as far as uh, culture, sharing, doing things the right way. They wrote the New York Times seller, bestseller book, Clients First. Absolutely do what they say. They're amazing, amazing people. Ironically, they just released their second book, and this is why I think it might be interesting for you to talk to. It's actually called Super Agents. Mm, wow. Uh, that's their book. It's kind of a um, – they literally go through the entire process of a transaction, uh, marketing to hiring to building a team, and it's very fundamental, very uh, client focused. But uh, the Callaways are here locally in Scottsdale, Arizona, um, one of the top in the country. Um, but their book, like I said, this one will go New York bestseller too. But it's actually called Super Agent. So I thought I'd share that with you because it's you know, obviously the title of your your uh, your program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I will. Look, I'll check that out. I'll look them up. Hey, speaking yeah, of books, awesome. speaking of books, that's we kind of ended every time, and I totally I got so wrapped up in your message. Um, you know, look, I'm an aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. What book should I go buy today? Well, so I just shared the one that I just finished reading, the which is thing. Super Agents. Oh, got um, it. so Super Agents is is now out there. Um, I think it's great. The one thing I got, I'm looking at two copies sitting on my desk right now that I give out to people. And then, um, so here I'm giving you three, but I can't help myself. Uh, the four disciplines of execution for DX. I think that book from a, from building a a team foundation and having your scoreboards and stuff is just extremely important. So I'd say super agents by the Callaways, the one thing, Gary Keller and four DX, which is, uh, um, Sean Covey, um, but it's the four disciplines of execution. Got They're it. All three phenomenal. And everybody knows they can go go get a free copy of this book at audibletrial.com slash superagentslive. Kenny, I got to cut you loose. Thanks so much, man. All right, buddy. Have a good one, and uh, let me know what I can do to help. Right on. See you, bud. All right, thanks. Let's go. Set luck, 20% skill, 15% 